What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're gonna do this uh, as a split channel um, kind of review. Uh, just talking about the belt, we're gonna go over it on the gear review channel. Um, on the Dome Tactical Firearms channel, we will show all the firearms and the reloading and that sort of thing um, on that channel. So this will be kind of a crossover. Uh, so if you wanna see us shooting the uh, firearm with the belt and doing the reloads and all that sort of thing, be sure to check that out on the other channel. Those of you on the Don't Tactical Firearms channel, you'll get everything. Uh, you'll get all this belt and plus the shooting. So uh, we'll kind of get up into it. Uh, we're gonna do some stuff on the range, like this intro, and then we're also gonna do a tabletop review of the belt. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this belt through a small test. We're not gonna do like a rigorous stress test or anything. We're gonna show you how it works. Um, and I'm gonna tell you what I like and don't like about it. Um, when we get to the tabletop, I'll explain a lot more of how I built the, be the belt, uh, the products and companies in which I used. We'll also have an unboxing videos for uh, all the gear. But since we're on the firearms bit, you know, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do some reloads. I'm going to do some runs. Uh, I'm going to hit the ground a couple of times, even though I really don't want to. And uh, you know, we're we're gonna we're gonna put this thing through its ringer. Um, just so you guys know, we do have merch like these patches in the store. So if you want one for your morale wall, go ahead and give us a, a little bit of a buy. Yeah. All right, we're gonna get at this. Let's see what we can do to this thing. This is Wolf, and uh, we're going to do a breakdown of my battle belt that I did an Amazon buy special with. Um, every item on this belt came from Amazon, minus the firearm. Um, Didn't so, you know Amazon sells firearms? Uh, I mean, you know. <laughs> so, everything on this belt was set up with my personal preferences. Um, you know, I have a history with firearms, and... Uh, tactics and so I decided to build this based on that knowledge um, I when I first built this belt the first iteration of this had a couple other pouches and things on it like this wasn't on here even though I, I bought this original but I didn't have a place to put it so it just kind of got opted off the belt because this originally was gonna be a land nav pouch but there wasn't really any room for it, it that is one thing I'll say about Amazon that I don't like is it is deceiving the sizes of things on there. So I thought this was going to be like half the size of this. Um, it turned out to be more of a chest panel than anything, but I did make it work on the belt and you know, I actually, I ordered this thinking it was going to be the size of an American flag and it turned out to be the size of my hand. Um, again, another chest based item that is meant for a tactical rig on your chest and not for a belt necessarily. But, you know, uh, where there is a will, there is a way. Everything does work. Um, this actually, when I built this, I didn't realize that between this drop leg platform and this right here, that uh, this that drop leg platform, that I was actually gonna lose all of my pockets. Like every single pocket I had on my pants. I felt like I was wearing women's jeans. I had no pockets whatsoever, and it was really annoying trying to stick my phone in between the, the straps when they were on my leg, or, you know, uh, having to carry everything in my hands, which defeated the purpose. I mean, yes, I could have always opened the dump pouch and put it in there, but it's not really what the dump pouch was there for. Um, so I, uh, I, rem I had a canteen here originally that I took off of here and put onto a 511 rush bag. Um, which that we actually have a review on the channel. There will be a link below for that video if you guys want to check that one out. Um, but I put that on the rush bag. Um, that's my canine go bag. And uh, so I'm a canine trainer and canine handler, so hence the Elite Spanker Tactical Leash. Um, honestly, with these kinds of leashes and stuff, I wouldn't recommend spending a whole bunch of money. So this thing was like 16 bucks. Overall, this entire belt was about, what, give or take, it was like 12 to 1400 bucks. 
um, everything together. There were a couple of expensive things, which I always tell people don't. There are certain items you you're, you should be willing to break the bank on, and there should be other items that, as long as it works. So there are a few items here that I wouldn't break the, uh, I wouldn't you know go budget on, and so a couple of those items, just so you guys know, uh, the medical kit. Uh, you get what you pay for with your medical kits, okay? Don't, don't, if you're gonna go skimp anywhere, everything else but the medical kit you can pretty much get away with, okay? Airsoft guys do it all the time with all the, the stuff and it still works. They're able to run around and use all their gear and they, they use it very similar to the way we use our gear here, okay? Um, you can go budget on a knife. I did go budget on this knife, okay? Uh, if you guys watch the unboxing, this is going to be an Ontario Knife Company knife. Saying MSRP is at right around between sixty and eighty dollars. Um, the Kydex sheath was like thirty bucks. Um, go with the Kydex sheath. The fabric ones are very, very hokey. Um, I don't really. I never will believe in a, a fiber sheath whatsoever. Um, I've seen someone stab themselves using one. Uh, all you have to do is see that once. You'll never, ever, ever trust them ever again. Um, he wasn't even putting it away hard, he just had it in his hand and stuck it in there, and the next thing he's like, ow, and held his hand out, and there's blood everywhere. We were like, oh my god. So, uh, don't do that. And, and also, don't get a flea market knife. For the, for the love of all that is holy, like, spend 40, 50 bucks, man. Like, it, don't buy a $10 MTAC knife. You're, you're gonna regret it when you go to use it and it just breaks in your hand. Um, when you really need it, too. That's the worst part. You'll, like, smack it around, it'll be just fine, but you'll go to spread some peanut butter and that thing will just snap. Um, so, all right, so we're gonna go over some of the items here. We're gonna go from right to left, all right? So, starting off, we're gonna talk about the belt. The belt platform itself is a VTAC skirmisher belt. You can see the logo right there, VTAC. Um, VTAC's a really well-known tactical and combat arms company. Um, they do actually offer a whole bunch of really cool classes. They make surefire lights, different AR platforms, um, different things for pistols and stuff. VTAX is known to be one of the best companies out there, or at least best marketed good companies. There's a, probably tons of better companies, they just aren't really out in the market pool the same way as VTAC is. Um, VTAC, the first time I ever heard of it was from a company called 511 Tactical, and it was a battle belt they built called the VTAC Brokoff's Belt. And uh, I saw that thing everywhere. And it worked really well. It was very comfortable. Um, it's had a lot of SWAT guys who had them and stuff. Um, the skirmisher belt's a, real, a lot lighter. It actually has a fiber belt. I know you guys only see the corner. But uh, it's got a Velcro underbelt. That um, The whole belt is Velcro. And so the base in here is actually a Velcro uh, under panel. And so you don't need belt keepers for something like this. This will, and I've tested it with all the gear in it fully loaded, even with a canteen full of water, I was able to just strap or stick the belt to myself and then let go with my hands and it held up. I was able to like jump up and down and run and move and it all stayed together. I was really surprised. Um, so that's the belt. Right here are some, a land nav tool. These are what's known as ranger beads or pace counting beads. Um, they're just meant so that you can tell how far you're going on a map to an extent. Um, take a land nav course if you're going to be carrying things like this. They do look cool, I'll give you that, but uh, cool and practical are very different, and practical is what you're looking for on a, on a battle belt. Uh, you can get some cool patches and stuff like I have here, um, which again, we talked about 5.11 just a second ago. This is a 5.11 Christmas patch, I think it was, and it was, the, it was in their like mystery bag, and it's uh, their uh, bullet donut. Um, <laughs> so we have, we have, uh, going here, we have our ranger beads, then over to this side, we're going to have our, what is it? It's meld tough glove holder. Um, I bought this way before the belt just because I needed something to hold my gloves when we were at the range. And so I've owned this thing for a minute. It fit really well with the belt. Um, it was really relatively cheap. Came in a set of two. Chris actually has one also. So, you know, we, uh, we both use them. Uh, we both actually have our gripes about them where if, you know, the tabs aren't fully there and you pull hard enough, it'll just slide on out. So if you're, like, running and you don't have your belt on, uh, you don't have your gloves on, and, you like, you press up against something and then you drag across it trying to acquire a target, they will just pop right off. That is kind of handy when you're just trying to rip them off your belt real quick to throw them on. Um, but I do like it for, like, 12 bucks. It definitely well worth it. Um, the next thing I have on here is actually probably my favorite pair of shooting gloves I've ever owned. These are mechanics. Most guys know mechanics. 
Um, if you've ever been in the military or done law enforcement or any sort of first responder work, hell, if you're a mechanic, you probably know what, who, what mechanics is. Um, they're a great company. These are the 0.5 uh, Ultra Dex gloves. And I really like these. I mean, they are like wearing nothing. Um, while having the protection of some leather on the bottom so you don't burn your hands, uh, things don't catch you. You can actually see the bottom of these ones are burned um, from holding different ARs like this bad boy right here. So I really quite enjoy it. They are uh, they're very handy. They're like, what, $26? They were worth every single cent. Um, I have also for winter time and or for heavier canine work for, for uh, rope handling, I have a pair of 511 gloves that are a little thicker and I do enjoy them better. And yes, I did just say thicker. Um, <laughs> uh, two or three C's. Oh, thick. Um, I'm going to hell. Um, the next item on here, um, <coughs> we're going to go over, but give me like two seconds. Presto. Okay, so now we're going to go over this item right here. Um, this right here is the Safari Land Drop Leg ALS Adapter that I somehow made work with a Black Hawk Serpa holster. Again, remember when I was telling you guys when there's a will, there's a way? Well, unbeknownst to Chris and I, we thought that all holsters usually came with you know, a variation of different holes drilled and everything that they would mostly all fit. That's not true. All right. Don't listen to our, our garbage. That is not true. And, uh, in just a sheer desperate bit of frustration, I made this work and I'll even show you guys how I made this work. You know, once it's on there, it's really on there. It's, uh, it's not meant to come off. Uh, so this fork is really cool cause you can transition from one holster to another, but, uh, definitely not the holes that you're meant to put things in. Okay, this was not meant for, for this. This is actually the closing bit for your fork. Um, and these sit off the platform quite precariously. This one looks like at some point it's just going to give through and just... Uh, yeah, that's that's probably not what you want to see right there. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, you know, we could definitely do a whole bunch of other things to make it work, but these are actually up here, are the holes that your Safari Land holster goes into, along with this one. Um... Why they have this and this, I don't understand. Um, because they only have the two upper holes here, and it's not like you're supposed to pin through the bracket. So I don't understand how that's supposed to work. But if you guys can't see, uh, you can actually see the marks where I'm, I'm just dragging that thing in there. Um, it works. Um, like I said, I mean, where there's a will, there's a way. I mean, as long as I can get the fork in there, I can press this in here until you hear it click. And it's not even fully in there yet. There we go. That's the click you're looking for, not the first one. Um, but you know, it gets right in there. Oh man, I didn't realize that was getting so worn out. Yeah, well, if you could make something a little bit more universal, that'd be cool. I mean, no, Safari Land, if you could make something a little more universal, would be nice. I mean, the, I really like this fork system. I mean, Blackhawk and Safari Land, if you guys could get together and make, you know, a universal holster platform between your companies. That'd be really cool, because there's a lot of nice Blackhawk holsters that are really cheap that just your regular everyday citizen could own, along with, you know, your regular security officers and things like that. And then there are, you know, the regular Safari Land holsters that are, are far more expensive, but you get what you pay for, and by far a lot better. This one was really nice, because none of the Safari Land uh, holsters had a cutout for the optic that I use. Um, because it has, uh, I have a, a special Leopold optic. Well, I, we're actually considering doing a video on it. If you guys want to see a video about the Leopold optic, that's on my Glock 19X. We'll just do a quick video about it. I mean, I mean we're going to do a video, not a short. Um, so, yeah, quick is relative. Okay, so now we've talked about the holster, the drop leg panel, which is pretty cool. I have it at its lowest setting. Um, and with this, it drops it about mid thigh, which I like because I have gorilla arms and I can pretty much touch my knee with just standing up, so it's nice to be able to just have my hand rest on my firearm. Um, when I say that, I mean it like sits right here, right under the pocket, and it's it's quite nice. I enjoy it. Um, probably by far actually my favorite setup. I've used quite a few Blackhawk drop leg rigs, and no shade to be thrown at Blackhawk, but that thing was awful. Um, I mean, by far probably one of the worst drop leg platforms I had. I was uh, doing armed security and was chasing a suspect who ran from me, and uh, 
I look down after I, after he cleared my property and I couldn't chase him anymore. I look down and there's just this holster hanging there by just a Velcro strap to my belt, just uh, with hopes and dreams. So uh, I'm happy that my my pistol didn't just go flying off. Man, that would have been the uh, the crowning achievement of any security officer anywhere chasing somebody just to hear skitter scatter skitter and look behind you and see your pistol going off into the distance. Uh, uh, just throw yourself in traffic while you're at it. Um, <laughs> so the next item on this list, we already talked about the knife. We talked about the holsters, the holster and drop leg platform. The next thing that you guys have probably noticed um, is this. Like, what in the world is this? Um, so this right here is what they call a pistol leash or pistol lanyard. Um, it connects to your belt, connects to the end of your pistol through a little eyelet attachment that you put in there. Um, Glock has one, I know Sig has one, and I also know Beretta has one. The Beretta M9 actually has one built into it. Like, it's not an addition, it is... There's a, a loop there for it, and so if any of you guys have an M9 and you're like, what is this little round thing for? This. This is literally what it's for. Um, the reason you carry one of these is, uh, you know, once your pistol runs out of battery and you've run, run out of uh, recharges for it, when you really got to go hands-on, you're not going to be like, hold on a minute, let me holster my firearm. You're just going to drop it and just start beating wholesale, open up a can of, of whoop arse. And, uh, you know, uh, you'll drag your pistol with you the whole time you're just whooping up on somebody. Um, it also is nice because somebody can't just snatch your pistol from you. You can have a retention lanyard. Um, it's not, like, it can go pretty long, um, you know, so it can get pretty far from you. You can actually go in a prone position and pull your pistol out in front of you. But, um, you know, if you grab onto, like, this end right here and yank back, you're just going to rip that thing out of their hands. Um, or at least pull the barrel off of, off of alignment so you don't get shot in the face with your own gun. Um, rest in peace, whoever's been shot in the face with their own gun like a James Bond movie. <laughs> so the next item we're going to be talking about is going to be this pouch. Uh, this thing's an MTAC thing. It was, like, this thing right here was MTAC. It, it was, like, all of, like, $8.00. Um, this holster right here was, uh, 40, I think. Um, and then the drop leg platform was like $88 to like 110. So just matters what you're looking for there. Um, it's really nice. I recommend this. Um, I know there's other companies like TRX Arms that make, uh, lay, uh and a leg attachment that goes through a holster that they, that they sell to turn it into that. They actually sell a whole rig that you can buy all this stuff. Um, None of it's cheap. Uh, just to let you guys know, this belt right here, including the inner belt, ran me about 160 bucks. And then we're going to talk about this pouch now. Uh, on the outside is a medical flag. Um, basically, this tells you my blood type. I'm O positive. Uh, I am allergic to penicillin, and I'm Jewish. Okay? So, O positive. All right? That is really important for only people who are trying to save me, and I'm unresponsive. If for some reason we decide to go shoot a lawnmower full of gas and, and tannerite and I blow my right arm or leg off, because, you know, I don't think that's ever happened before, but, you know, if it does uh, and I'm not awake, the paramedics at least know what blood to give me um, to keep me alive. That's happened before, hasn't it? Probably so. Actually... Foreshadowing. Actually, I think it literally has happened before. Like oh, has it? Video. Oh, shit. Yeah. Sorry, whoever actually did that. Actually, you deserve know. a Darwin Award. I, um, think, I think Brendan Herrera did a Darwin Award about oh, it. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right, well. <laughs> hey, just for you guys' uh, 411, uh, don't shoot a lawnmower full of tannerite <laughs> from 30 feet away. I can't um, remember if it was a lawnmower or what. But I mean, we all know the legend, FPS, Mr. Russia, and... Uh, he almost killed himself with a fridge door. So, and he was like 200 feet from the fridge when it blew up. So, don't shoot metal things that fire shrapnel in every single direction from a close range. That's a way to self-death. And, uh, you know, unless you really want a pine box and you want people to remember you, that's a heck of a way to get remembered. Oh, they'll, they'll never forget you, neither will the gun tube community when you get us removed. Um, <laughs> it's a little snuff on the internet. All right. So... Now we're after this pouch, or after this uh, patch. This patch was, like, actually really expensive. It was, like, 20 bucks. Um, but this is an IR reflective coating on the back of it. It is actually a really high-quality patch. I mean, you can tell by... It really didn't want to come off. 
Um, but you can tell it's a nice high-quality patch. It's uh, it's real big, like I said, it's the size of my hand. Um, you can read this from like 50 feet away from me. Um, which is great until I run into somebody who does not like the fact I'm Jewish. Um, then I'm just, just advertising for the world. Um, ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so this pouch is pretty cool. This is a... Uh, God, what company is this? Uh, it, we have the company name in our unboxing uh, video. Um, you know, I have a Ridge wallet. That's what I personally carry as a Ridge wallet. I think these things are the greatest thing ever. So this thing is really just an over-glorified man purse. It holds a Ridge wallet, um, I think a lighter. Uh, most of the time it'll have my phone in it. Um, my phone, my work phone, um, my side chick's phone. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding, I promise. She is dead to the world. It's alright. So, um... <laughs> getting back to things. So this pouch is actually really handy, man. I, I really enjoy it. This part opens up completely. Um, this was, like I said, going to be a land nav pouch, so I was going to have, you know, uh, my uh, protractor in here, um, all my pens all throughout here, and then um, a compass and some other little items here. Since I put this on my back, and it's on the right side of my back, if you've ever put a Lanzatic compass in something and then laid against it, uh, you'll never want to do that again. Um, that was uh, by far one of the most uncomfortable experiences. I was actually far more comfortable with a full canteen full of water and a metal canteen cup and a K-Bar battle spoon all in one pouch pressed against the side of my back while I'm driving around. So to give you guys a little 411, I wore this ve this belt for, <laughs> what, about two and a half weeks now? Yeah. Almost every single day. Um, I run my own business and stuff, so, you know, I, it's not like I was going to get in trouble doing this at work. Uh, it was kind of interesting trying to explain to my clients uh, that I apologize for looking like I'm about to invade Poland. But, uh, and then yeah. you actually find this YouTube video? Uh, yeah, well, I told them all exactly what I'm doing, that, you know, without, I, I, we're doing a YouTube review on this, and so they were all super cool about it, um, which is nice. I have some of the best clients in the world, so uh, I got lucky on that one. Uh, thank you, COVID, for thinning the herd. Um, oh... That just happened. So, what a day. yay. Okay. Rest in peace, Coca-Cola. You will be missed. I didn't even half enjoy you. Okay, back to the video, everybody. Now we've had our candlelight vigil for that soda. <sighs> this inside of me right here, this part. See, see what that says? Is, is burning right now, burning, because I just wasted an entire soda. <sighs> you just hear my dad screaming at me, what are we made of money? All right, so this pouch, uh, it's actually quite nice. Uh, what I didn't like is the uh, webbing, the mole webbing that came with it. So I actually bought some aftermarket webbing from, I think, Rothko? Um, and actually, their mole webbing is fantastic. It's actually quite, uh, it's quite thick. It um, has some really good snaps, um, and it, they're big. They're actually quite large, so they were able to go all the way up and down this pouch. This pouch has uh, space for three, and so I, I filled all the space, which was really nice. Um, thank you. And uh, it worked out really well. So this pouch can hold a lot more than what I use it for. I use it for an over-glorified man purse. So it is, it is just a place that holds my, my wallet, watch, phone, keys, all that fun stuff. Uh, other than my wrist, when we're out the range, sometimes I'll take my, my nice watch off and I'll put it in here so that I don't smack it against something. So as we transition from this pouch over to this, this pouch I think ran like 30 bucks. This is a Condor mini roll-up dump pouch. Probably by far one of the most useful things on this, on this entire belt is this. And it's useful for more than just battle. If, you know, I was out foraging or, you know, out camping or using this as my, my garden defense belt, why anybody would have one of those? I mean, this, uh, this is the United States, so you can do whatever you want. It's, uh, freedom. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, oh, my soul's on fire. <coughs> <laughs> Into the moon! Um, alright. Oh, God. I love Private Potato. Okay, so this dump pouch is meant for things like collecting e empty magazines, some AR mags, things like that when you're out on the range. 
and you just throw on that or loose items that you that you need or loose brass you know if you're going out into combat and you want to carry more than what you have in your magazines and carry some extra you can open this up uh, it does pull closed if you pull on both the tabs um, it's also you can operate it with one hand pretty easily where you know you can roll it back up and do everything with one hand doesn't need to be pretty it just needs to be closed um, this thing was like $14 so this pouch was like 12 bucks um, definitely well worth every penny of $12 next we're gonna move over to this this is a, a condor special um, I had originally a double mag pouch um, I'm gonna make that appear on the table right about okay so I originally had this on there that was slick wasn't it um, oh shit gloves uh, I was talking about these gloves earlier. We'll go into those here in a minute. So this right here is a uh, Rothko pouch. It's not a Condor pouch. They're very similar, but you can tell they're uh, with their 50 shades of FDE, they are very different. Um, this one's actually really nice. This was like a $10 pouch from Rothko. And if you guys don't know Rothko, they're like the budgetest of budgeted budging items you can ever budget for. Um, what is in here? There's something in here, guys. Batteries. Yeah, you can't ever go without batteries. Remember, we said you got to put your battery in your firearm, right? Oh, man. <laughs> you got to battery it up. Oh, God. I'm going to hell. Stop scratching your face like that, Chris. Don't facepalm. Not a facepalm moment. All right. So, this was just really big. All right. So, it took a lot of space on the belt itself. Um, meaning that, you know, I, I couldn't really have a whole lot of stuff on here with this. And, I was carrying a 5.56, five, I was carrying an AR pistol, and thanks to uh, our uh, glorious convenience store known as the ATF, I couldn't carry my AR pistol anymore, so I wasn't going to carry more than one magazine for what I'm carrying for this. Um, what I decided to carry is the Snake Bite from SIG, it's a 7.16i, uh, and chambered in 308, and uh, if you've ever carried one 308 magazine, you won't want to carry two of them. Um, they are really heavy. They, they, they weigh as much as like 10 boxes that you might be moving. Two 5.56 five, mags completely loaded, um, which is what I was carrying in here. And I tried to put two of them in this and was like, why do I want a hernia? So, uh, you know, I went ahead and uh, got rid of this. Transition to just a single mag, um, like I was saying before. One AR-10 mag um, will fit in this really nicely. This is one of those universal ones. It, it can, it'll take any AR mag or AK mag or whatever you want to put into it. Um, and it's got a good color of FDE. You can actually tell it's Condor because these are both Condor. The exact same FDE. Well, this right here is Rothko. <laughs> and you can tell because the FDE is completely off. Um, which is alright. Um, you know, Chris has a saying and it's uh, 50 shades of FDE. And uh, I totally agree because we have all 50 shades right here. So this is a triple mag carrier. Um, we'll go back to this one real quick. This was like $14. <coughs> um, comparative to the other one that was like $10. It carries multiple magazines. This one only carries one. And if you you can carry, I think, two AR-15 mags in here. But you can only carry one 308 mag. That's it. Um, if I attempted to shove another one in there, I think I'd, I'd actually ruin the structural integrity of the pouch and it would no longer be viable. Um, I'd probably just rip it. And uh, So this is a triple mag pouch right here by Rothko. Um, again, Rothko. I just love saying that, Rothko. Um, feel like I'm, I'm over here being like, and Acme, and then Acme. Um, Rothko is basically the real life Acme. Um, and you know, some of you guys might know Rothko because you uh, play Airsoft. Um, it works. You know, these are super basic pouches. They're just Velcro. They do not have the tension to hold this without the Velcro, okay? If anybody ever tells you they can, they're on crack. All right, the, I would just throw my magazines out if I jumped. Um, and that is not what you want. And I know they have like a little thing here, but that is not, you're not getting a magazine through that, okay? It barely even holds this thing there. And to get a 19X mag in there, or even if you're going to put a, a, a SIG mag in there that carries over 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 uh, 17 rounds, you're going to need to extend the top of this thing just so that you can get it closed. Um, and the downside to that is you have this Velcro back here that's just kind of there. 
So if you do what I do when you like to rest your arms along your belt, you're just going to tear up your forearm. So that's a downside to this. This was like $8. On to the meat and potatoes of actually something I spent a good amount of money on. Uh, this is a Sharpie. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> this was $40 Sharpie. Oh, God, I better write in fucking space. Ah. All you need is pencil. So this right here, we're going to go over real quick. This is my uh, Lightning X. Lightning X is a great medical company, okay? They make really good stuff for first responders, military, um, law enforcement, uh, for range bags, for civilians. They make some of the greatest stuff. I actually have a complete EMT crash bag in my vehicle. Um, I've had one there for years. I, I continue to restock it every couple years. Um, but everything's sealed. So if you never use something that's sealed, you don't have to replace it. <laughs> it's sealed. So we're going to open this thing up, and I'm going to let you guys take a look at what's in here. Um, what I think is important to have. Um, you know, I actually have one funny thing in here, which is this right here. This is a Duke Cannon Sawtooth Cologne, because smelling bad is an injury. Okay? Don't smell like butthole. All right, it's offensive to everybody who is around you that has to smell you. So after you've been running and doing a whole bunch of stuff, you can give yourself a little spurt and you smell like cheap cologne, uh, which is better than BO. So in here, you know, we have your basic medical supplies. There is a whole list to this. If you guys go to Amazon, you look at Lightning X Tactical. Um, this is their Spread Eagle kit. Um, it comes completely stocked, okay? Um, you know, you have your compression gauze, rolls of gauze, I have quick clot back here, um, I have a cat tourniquet, I have a um, needle, oh, I forgot what this thing is, needle decompression kit. Just to give you an idea of some guys, what's in this pouch, since I'm already starting to take stuff out of it, I gotta reorganize it anyway. Um, we're just gonna pull all the stuff out of there. Um, Chris can actually start going through it and telling you guys what everything is. Uh, well, I'm just gonna read off what it says. It's a hemorrhage control bandage, see that? Uh, got some uh, medical shears that are still in the packaging. As you can tell, Wolf has never had to use this. <laughs> I, I'd pray never to have to use mm -hmm. it, so everything stays in the packaging so it's all sealed. If I ever use it, I want to bring it out of the seal. This is a suture. This is a nasal airway. Some nice little nitrile gloves. A little needle thing. Some quick light. Some gauze, I think that's gauze. Um, a chest seal. And the burn dressing. Some more, uh, like finer. So these are, uh, these are vices. These yeah. these are grips. Um, they, they actually have a name, I just can't remember them off the top I, of I can't either. Good some old stretch jaws. Burn dressing, burn relief gel. Um, because usually anything that the reason I have this is this is a range kit So if something goes wrong, it's probably something's exploded um, Or some shrapnels caught somebody in, in a place. They really wish they didn't get shrapnel <laughs> in. And so either you burned yourself So I have burn dressing and the most common reason to use this is uh, if you've ever shot more than 200 rounds out of an AR in one sitting like in the the what like 15 seconds it really or 15 mm -hmm. like five minutes it will take you to, to shoot two 300 rounds if you have all the mags packed uh that barrel gets stinking hot and so does the so does the uh the cover and um i don't i think i did this before i got my instructor sir i don't know if it really makes a difference but uh <laughs> um we were shooting out at a buddy's ranch and my wife had just got done shooting and she leaned the hot barrel up against the paint of my vehicle and at the time, I actually cared about my paint. And so my first knee-jerk reaction was to move it off the paint, not thinking I grabbed the fucking hot barrel like a dipshit and burnt the fuck out of my hand. Luckily, Ouch. luckily the people who were on that, um, that we were shooting on the range, they had uh, aloe plants. So we went and uh, diced up some aloe and put some natural aloe on, on, the, on the burn, and it actually healed pretty quickly. <laughs> Yeah, and burns are never fun, guys. Uh, ever, ever fun. And the quicker you can get to it and soothe it and that kind of stuff, the faster it will heal. Um, so we have some burn gel. Um, it's not a cooling pad, so you can actually fold it, which is why we have it. It's so it can be folded and nicely tucked into our bag, which I am over here just 
diligently trying to figure out where everything came from. So, quick clock, probably one of the best things to have when it comes down to a gunshot trauma kit. And that's pretty much what this is, is a gunshot trauma kit. Um, none of this stuff uh, should, you know, have enough, other than like the cat tourniquet, should have an issue if you bend it, fold it, move it around. None of this stuff should actually be affected by any of that. So I can just more or less ram most of the stuff in there. Um, uh, That's what she said. Yeah, like I was some yawning. of y'all's girlfriends. <laughs> um, I was yawning. I wasn't able to get to it that quick. <laughs> that's also what she said. <laughs> so, um, you know, all of this stuff has a place. It's just finding the place for it, um, you know, where it most ergonomically fits and it is the best is, is kind of difficult. I'm not going to lie. All these pouches, always in my mind, have always been very difficult to work with. Um, every medical pouch I've ever owned has always been difficult to work with. It's, I'm pretty sure, just user error, because I am half of a moron. Um, only half a moron. Um, I say that because we know people who are legitimate morons. Um, one of them I got the leash from! Um, but all this stuff has a place, and you're supposed to put it in its place, and, you know, the more, the better you get at putting all this stuff in its place, the better the pouch feels and works. Um, I do always recommend organizing your pouches, making sure you know where all your stuff is, because, uh, really, that's the most important part. I want to be able to reach in here and know I'm grabbing, you know, a tourniquet, and that it just comes out instead of what you saw earlier, where I went to go pull it out, and it just was like, no, I'm going to stay here. Um... <laughs> You can use something else. Damn you. Um, so just make sure you know you guys take the time to organize your pouches and know where you're putting all your stuff so that you don't get into a situation and then not be, not be able to get the things you need in a timely manner because that is... Oh, goodbye. Gauze? I don't need gauze. Who needs gauze? Nobody needs gauze. So just remember to, to, to put all your stuff where you need it. Um, these pouches roll out, so do remember when you're putting stuff away in your pouches to find what angle things are going to be at um, on your body. I think there was a reason I actually had the airway in the, on the other side and the tourniquet over here. But, you know, I'm not smart. I'm just a man. So, I'm just going to put things the way I want them to be. And yeah, when you get these uh, kind of trauma shears and you're trying to pack them into a bag, um, if they're in a plastic bag like this, make sure you circle the bag around, because if you just leave it open, they're just going to punch right through the corner. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> Lots of experience and learning. From stupid mistakes. Especially when you've had to call the company and be like, Oh, I got it like this, and you definitely didn't. <laughs> and they send you a new one because they're amazing. Lightning X, best tactical medical company I've ever had the, the pleasure of working with. Um, their their uh, customer service is super responsive, and their pouches are actually quite great, even if you pack them like you're an idiot, which I just did. Um, you know, the, the pouch works really well. I like this thing. It was worth every penny I spent on it. Um, you know, there are some things that are kind of annoying with it, but uh, I think I'll find that same annoying with any pouch I use. One of them being that I like to do this with my pens. That also keeps uh, the pouch from catching on things and just opening all on its own. This is meant for, you know, you just shot somebody in the chest and you don't want them to die. Or you're with your buddy on the range and his rifle explodes in his face. Um, or, you know, he goes to shoot a 50 caliber slap round and his rifle blows through his throat. Um, just put a thumb in it. Yeah, th some of this stuff is a lot better than putting your thumb in it. Um, granted, all else fails, put your thumb in it. Uh, and that's a shout out to you, Kentucky. So this pouch right here was like $160. Um, fully stocked and everything, it's well worth it. I recommend always, always spending your money on your holster and belt, and then always spending your money, your, most of your money really should go into a really good solid medical kit. I have my name and my prisoner ID on here. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen this number on my forearm during a bunch of our videos. Uh, I had a family member who did not make it through the Holocaust and that was his number. I have it on my arm and uh, it is my identification number that I put on everything. This is not a badge number. If it was, there's a lot of cops in that department. Um, <laughs> I mean, either that or they're APD. Um, <laughs> 
they go by series, and I think what they're like at series 14 now, so it's like 14,000. You're like, good lord. Um, I always carry Sharpie on me because Sharpies are super handy when you're on the range. Uh, they also make great medical items. Um, what I mean by that is if somebody gets bit by a spider or something, you make a little circle around it. Um, you know, uh, well, the reason I have a Sharpie for next to my medical kit is because if you ever use a tourniquet, you want to write on the person's forehead or on their wrist or some part of them that's not just gushing blood. Uh, the time in which you put the tourniquet on. Because the tourniquet can only be on for a certain period of time before they just lose the limb. Just remember that, because you got to release the pressure on the tourniquet to let blood flow, but if they're, you know, got a whole bunch of blood just pouring out of them from that spot, you can't really release it, so it, it's a hairy thing. Um, I've actually heard stories of guys having that go on where they had to release the pressure and then put it back on because the trip was taking too long. So other than the Sharpie back here behind the medical kit, I also have a Gerber tactical pen. Probably one of the coolest little pens I have ever held. This thing is heavy. It's got a really great click action, so in case you like annoying everybody around you with a nice little clicky click, um, like I do, uh, it's fantastic. And it's got this little thing on the end, I don't know if you guys can see it. So that little thing on the end right there is actually a glass breaker tip. Um, let's test. no, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, uh. Uh, how did we get evicted? I don't know. But no, it's a Gerber, it's a Gerber tool right here, and it's it's handy. I mean, it's a pen. It does what its jo main job is. It writes really well, but it is also heavy, like really heavy for a pen, um, which is nice because you know the weight is is handy. Plus, it's big enough to where if you actually have to use it to smack into something, you can still hold on to. Ooh, that works. Pushes holes right through a towel. Really nice pen, I like it. It, it unscrews um, from the bottom. And you can just refill it with another basic ink. Um, this one is, oh wow, no more pen. Um, this is a right in the rain one, so. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, so that's actually cool. From Fisher, like Fisher, like Fisher Price? I'm assuming so. That's pretty cool. I didn't know Fisher Price did anything other than kids toys. So, ah, the more you know. I don't know any other Fisher. Neither do I. But like I said, pretty handy pen. Uh, I like it quite a bit. It's been really nice to me so far. But I'm sure you can put any ink that cartridge that's that size in there. It doesn't have to be right in the rain. So these two pouches on either side, they are both from the same company. They're from a company called Condor. Um, which you guys have seen a bunch on here. Condor is another budget company. They do make relatively quality stuff for being budget. Um... Like I said, this is actually a really nice little pouch. I like Condor's FDE the most out of really any of the other budget brands I've gotten. Um, I am really upset one, about one thing, which is this pouch. I spent a ton of money in the picture, which in which I got it from, looked far more coyote than this. This is desert tan, okay? This is not coyote. And this thing confuses the heck out of everybody who sees it. Um, I mean, thankfully it says med and giant letters right there. But uh, it confuses people when they see it because it doesn't, it doesn't match any of the other colors on here. Um, it's the only oddball out for the 50 shades. So it's the lightest of the 50 shades. Um, so inside these pouches I carry in this one, I have a Gerber, I think this is Gerber. It's a Gerber multi-tool. Um, it's their multipliers. It is their actual, uh, it's the larger version um, of the small one that has no knife. So this one actually is TSA compliant. It actually has no knife built into it. That's why I carry a, a fixed blade. Is because this little bad boy right here does not actually have a knife in it. Now I do really like this multi-tool. It's really handy. It's got you know some nice tools on the inside of it. You know you got your little bottle opener. And I think this actually area. Let me see if I can find it. this thing right here. You can put an interchangeable blade in here if you want. So it has the option to have a knife, but you also have the option to take it out. Um, so that you can get on an airplane and stuff. And all your tools actually lock back here. And you have to pull this little thing down to, to bring them in. Um, I like this thing a lot. It's not spring-loaded, so it doesn't just, like, immediately snap back or, you know, it doesn't lock either. So that's kind of nice. It doesn't do, like, the ones that, you know, we had in, that I saw when I was in the Army, which is, you know, guys could literally like, take it and just do that, and it would just pop out. Oh, hey, it worked. just took a whole lot more than what I'm used to seeing normally. Those guys would just flick their wrist once and be like, shink! So... I got this because I really like it. It's got wire cutters that you can change out in here. As you can tell, I probably need to change mine. They're rusted, and this one's got a nice dent in it. I, I've, I've had this thing for years, far far longer than I've, I've decided to own the belt. I used to carry this in a Kydex sheath, 
uh, with my ED it's one of my EDC tools. You should always have pliers. If you don't have a multi-tool or at least a knife, you lose your man card. So if you guys want to see a, an actual full-out review of this and maybe a, a torture test, let us know in the comments below, and uh, we might make um, that happen. I mean. I would hate to see these things go, but I wouldn't mind pushing them to their limit or maybe testing them against something like the uh, Leatherman side or the Leather Leatherman Sidekick or the Rebar, which is what these are very similar to. Um, if you guys want to see us test any of these kinds of tools, let us know. Send a tool in there. You know, if you guys would like to have us test a tool you own, um, go ahead and give us a direct message, and uh, we'll get that set up, and we can get your tool featured, and uh, we'll break it. So yeah, just leave a comment and uh, you know, we'll, we'll reach out to you, um, you know, so just let us know and we'll, we'll you know, we, we do read all of our comments to our dismay, um, or at least mine, uh, <laughs> we do read all of our comments. So going back over here, this other side right here carries my flashlight, and again we can do a review on things like this flashlight, but it is uh, nice and bright. One of my favorite features of this flashlight is when it gets close to something, did you guys see it? Auto dims. And I actually really like that. So if you're actually using it and you come up close to an item and you come onto it, notice how it just auto dimmed? That's really nice to see. I don't know how much you guys can see on the camera, but it does have some other settings. Um, this one is a push on the back or a push in the front. It has a very low light setting. It has the bright setting. And then if you double tap it twice there we go it's got a strobe so I can give everybody a seizure right now we should probably put a seizure warning on there but you know it's a, a flashlight from Olight it's I think the warrior mini 2 I think it says it right there the warrior Jesus where's that camera there it is the warrior mini 2 and it's from a company called Olight and I like Olight quite a bit um, this was actually the first Olight light that I've ever bought I've owned this thing for a couple years this is not the clip that came with it. I lost that within like the first month of owning it. Um, this clip came off another little flashlight that I got as like a temporary light because my stream light broke. Um, I used to actually only use stream light lights. When Chris and I first met, we were both doing armed security and I had like stream light everything. I had a TLR1, a high lumen. I had the, uh, the Scorpion, I think it was called, or the Stinger. Um, from Streamlight, um, but in their high lumen version, I called it the Vomit Maker, because you know, doing security, you deal with a lot of drunk people at cantinas where I'm at, and uh, somebody comes at you and you you hit them with a nice big old high lumen thousand lumen strobe, they uh, refund all of the alcohol in which they put in their system, usually all over themselves, their friends, and uh, if you're really unlucky, all over you. So I learned to do that from a distance or be backing up while doing it because uh, you only get painted once before you don't ever let that happen again. So this is an Olight. Like I said, if you guys want to see us do review this or any stream lights, Chris actually has a really nice stream light for his belt um, when we do his breakdown. But, uh, you know, like I said, mine's all budget. This is like an $80 light. The Gerber right there was like a, I think it was like 100 bucks. And in the world of multi-tools, that's really cheap. Um... You know, and these pouches in and of themselves, I think we're like $15 a pouch. Um, underneath here is a nice drop leg platform from a company called Elite Spanker. I love saying that. Elite Spanker. 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 All right. They're the same guys who made my uh, my tactical leash here. Uh, spanker. Um, come here, sweetie. I got a spanker. Um, so that's pretty much the whole belt. Um, I mean, I have a Cobra VTAC broke or VTAC Cobra belt in here. Um, that's got a nice little uh, nice little hook here. It's a uh, God, what are the the belts called? Uh, a rigger belt. Um, I like them quite a bit. And then uh, I said last but not least, I was gonna go over my winter gloves or my uh, my canine handling gloves for rope handling or leash handling. These are 511 comp gloves. Um, they're not like hard knuckle or anything, but they have a really nice thick sole. And so when I'm holding a leash and everything and it, it pulls through on this side, it doesn't really rip up my hand. I've worn these a couple times for shooting. Not really my favorite for shooting. The trigger finger is a little thick and it kind of gets in the way in the magwell and you know causes uh certain errors in shooting that 
for me, really aren't the end of the world because I'm not shooting for a or for pinpoint accuracy. I do accuracy by volume, not accuracy by just single shots. Uh, that's where Chris and I differ. He likes to hit, you know, three shots in the same place. I like to hit at least five of 30 in the same place. It works out, you know, dead is dead. Um, bad guys don't really care if you shoot them once or you shoot at them 30 times. Once you hit them once and they die, you're good. <laughs> Well, that's my belt. Um, I like it quite a bit. It's actually been one of the better belts I have ever built and owned. Um, I enjoy this one. This one has been really nice. Like I said, I wore it for two weeks, uh, two and a half weeks, and I wore it in my vehicle. I, you know, getting in and out of my vehicle, I drive a, a 2016 uh, Ford Police Interceptor Utility. Uh, it's an auction vehicle that I turned into a company vehicle for myself. And, uh, I think you guys have seen it in a few of our videos if you watch our range videos. Uh, it's in the background. It's a white one with uh, green lettering and stickering and stuff. But I really like this thing. I mean, a couple things that uh, I, I am going to definitely probably change is I'm probably going to remove the three magazine pouch here and go with a two magazine pouch. I really don't need three. And this is, uh, you know, if I need more than two extra mags of, of 19 rounds, something has really gone wrong because these two magazines are supposed to get me to my AR and if I have to shoot with more than 50 rounds of 308 at somebody I, I I should just stop but I mean overall I like this it's not that heavy once I took the canteen and everything off the canteen was just massively retardedly heavy um, once I took the can canteen off um, I dr it dropped a bunch of weight so with the canteen on there it was about 52 pounds with the canteen off it's roughly about between 38 and 40 pounds um, yes, a full one quart canteen with canteen cup and stuff was like 10 pounds. It was ridiculous. Not the end of the world. I mean, I did a couple videos. Uh, I actually ran the uh, the Williford drill um, with uh, the full canteen. Um, we'll never do that again. Um, the The problem with it being on a belt like this, and uh, especially this kind of belt, um, and where I had it was when I was running and stuff. It just wanted to try to attempt to escape the belt. So it'd pop out these and then would slowly work its way out. And, and funny enough, when something slowly works its way out of mole webbing, once you've like, you know, laced it in, you can't tell. You can't tell that it's trying to remove itself from the belt until you get about two lengths out and you go to like look at the pouch and it's just hanging kind of upside down. You're like, oh God, how did that happen? But I really like this belt. Um, like I said, there's a couple things I'll change. Um, this thing's always going to be changing, so keep an eye on the videos. If you see something that's changed on it and we haven't done a review on, on the thing that has changed, yeah. let us know and we'll, we'll, we'll do a small, a small quick short on, you know, Belt 2.0. Um, this is a budget build. So as our channel grows, Chris and I are both going to do uh, gucci -er belts. Um, one's more set up for just the range. This was my uh, uh, GTFO belt. Um, it really just meant for me to, if I have this in my vehicle, and I really need to get somewhere um, because things have gone completely, completely foobar. Um, this will get me home, okay? It'll get me, get me out of the situation I'm in and get me home. It's got enough items on here for me to be able to take care of myself for a moment. Uh, some of the things it's missing is like water and stuff, which is why I had the canteen on there. But I think with all this stuff on here, I could somehow come up with water if I really needed it. Um, you know. <laughs> I think there's a way for me to just be like, give me that water. Um, so, you know, in all reality, this belt's been really, really nice. Um, like I said, I've, I've worn it every day for about two and a half weeks. My clients have been real confused when I start not wearing it every day. Um, I think they've just grown accustomed to it. Uh, nobody even bats an eyelash anymore. It's pretty funny. Even our, like our local stores and stuff don't even bat an eyelash at it. They're just, that's just Wolf. Um, that's just, uh, I'm just that crazy guy. And it's really not that crazy. For where we live, I mean... It's, uh, it makes sense. It really does. But, uh, so that's the battle belt. If you want to grab that side and flip it over. Um, so that's the entire battle belt. Um, we're going to, you know, do one. Chris is going to be building one also. I don't know if he's going to do a, uh, a cheaper version of what he was going to do or if he's going to do a full Gucci belt. Uh, I, I don't and this is what happens after you break a, break a Coca Cola <laughs> bottle. He actually, uh, picked it all up off the floor and squeezed it out. Uh. <laughs> It's like Vietnam, just some glass in the cup, just... <laughs> um, all right. But anyways, um, so a couple gripes that I want to make um, about the uh, the belt. Starting off here, 
<laughs> I personally would not have gone with this route. I do like how I clever it to. was. I didn't want to. Originally, yeah. I had actually set up to get a, uh, Safari. a, a Safari Land holster, but all of their holsters are cut like really high, mm -hmm. so the back end of the holster comes up to about here. And the problem with that is this Leopold optic, which is this right here, doesn't allow for many holsters, unfortunately. Um, it, and in and, and, and all the optic cuts ones that actually would have worked with Safari Land, the hood, unfortunately, wouldn't be able to close because of this. Mm -hmm. So it really left my options really limited with this. I, I really, especially in the coyote color. If I went black, there was a bunch of other companies I could have gone with. But since it's in this coyote color and I didn't want to spend like $180 to have somebody custom make me a holster, which, you know, might be coming in the future. You know, we, we, we've been reaching out to a whole bunch of different firearms comp companies. And if we get some, some feedback from them, we might actually, you know, design our own holsters and stuff. And, you know, I will personally go out of my way to make sure that one is designed for this crazy optic. These things are really new. Um, it is a way to put a red dot optic in a minimalistic fashion onto a non-milled uh, non, um, firearm. And what I mean by milled is it, it doesn't have uh, the optics plate, the optics mount here. It's not armored. It's uh, it's just uh, this this goes through your rear sight post, and boom, you have a red dot. Is it the greatest red dot? I mean, it's better than no red dot. I mean, it, it's actually really not all that bad. Once you figure out what you're doing um, and you zero it so that the, the, the dot is directly on to your front sight post, um, the rear here actually has two dots back here, and it mimics your sight post. So... Even if the optic fails, it has the ability to do that. But like Chris said, this is not my first choice either, but it was better than no holster. I wasn't just going to kind of run around with it in my hand. <laughs> um, another gripe is going to be the lanyard. Um, in this application, you know, trying to make it look like a, um, a military kind of duty style belt, um, the lanyard does make sense, but... Um, I've seen it get in the way more than I've seen it be, you know, relatively useful, especially on the flat range. Now, when you're out and about, I could see using it. I intend to use this belt for a whole lot more. I intend to do some hiking and stuff with it. My romantic partner and I, we have some plans to go and do some uh, really hard outdoor excursions. We wanted to do, you know, a couple of hikes here in our state. And then we also wanted to go and do parts of the Appalachian Trail in states that, you know, allowed for open carry. Um... I have a personal thing. I don't really like to be in states that don't allow open carry and don't do constitutional carry. It just bothers me inside. Um, you know, which thankfully for us, uh, now that Florida has gone constitutional, more than half the United States is constitutional carry, just so you all know that. Um, <laughs> oh, my God, they're giving citizens their rights back. Um, who would have thunk it? And then to can you continue on with the gripes, um, since I'm, I was given the option to be very nitpicky, uh, the Ranger beads are more of a, at least in this setup. Aesthetics. Um, yeah, they're more of a look. So they could definitely be thrown into a pouch or whatever until you actually needed them. Yeah, um, I just put just them there because I like them. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I like them there. Plus, uh, they make the greatest fidget tool you will ever run into when I'm bored and I'm sitting in traffic. Uh, I just move them around <laughs> and uh, it keeps me from uh, throwing sodas at cars. Um. <laughs> and then I do want to. I do want to also jump into a. Uh, I told you so moment because he's moving from the three to a two. So Rothko doesn't have a two. They only had the option for a single or or for three. So I got the three because I wanted more than I didn't want to just put two single pouches on there because when I ran just these two yeah. on there, they would like they would they would like go like this and they would wiggle try to wiggle around each other. Oof. So I found that. Condor makes a two pack, and so I'm probably going to change over to a Condor, which means more of my stuff will be this FDE, which really makes me want to go and get the Condor Spread Eagle pouch and transfer all this stuff to the Condor pouch. It's probably what's going to happen. You guys will probably see this color, this FDE change. Uh, the pouches are darn near the same, um, so I'm probably going to go to the Condor for this and go to a, a Condor double mag, as it makes just more sense. Uh, the double mag pouch I had here was something that, um, if I was carrying an AR-15, very handy. Um, because with an AR-15, you definitely want to carry at least two extra mags, because uh, you you probably will need them. In this leash, I mean, for a lot of people, they would say this is really not necessary. I'm a canine trainer, so that's the only reason I have a leash on there, okay? Um, this is something I actually uh, owned for a while. So I actually carry this on the belt. What I end up doing is, because it's about a little longer than the belt itself, 
I wrap it all the way around my body and I connect it to here, which is actually really handy. It's like another form of belt retention. Um, if my, for some reason my underbelt was to let go, this thing actually will catch my hips and hold things up. Um, it's also kind of handy because uh, it's got these little loops in it and I can stick stuff on it. And it, it, Other than just a leash, this thing has a, mm, tons of other really good uses. Another thing that I might want to gripe about is there's no um, readily available tourniquets. Proving my point. <laughs> the very first thing I can get to is a tourniquet. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> it's like number one item right here is the tourniquet. So, well, that's great. But I would have one also on the outside of the pack. So the problem with having one on the outside, uh, one, unless I leave it sealed like this, which this is a real cat tourniquet, just so mm -hmm. you guys see, like, that's one of the things I like about Lightning X. They don't skimp out on the stuff they give you. They're not going to give you a Chinese cat. Um, you know, this one... I think it was made here in the U.S.? I have no idea. But you're not going to get a cheap cat. It's a real cat tourniquet. It's not going to be one of the knockoff cats. So this is actually a real tourniquet. I like it quite a bit. Um, you know, I've, I've opened it up and played with it for so much, you know. But uh, I've used quite a few cat tourniquets in my life. Um, I really trust cat tourniquets. But a dirty cat tourniquet is more dangerous than not putting a cat on there. So when you have one on the outside of your belt, especially if you do one of those like police style Kydex ones, where just the top of your cat tourniquet's hanging out, and you're dealing in the mud, dust, rain, all that kind of stuff, one thing most people don't do is like, ah, let me take my tourniquet out and clean it. Most guys don't do that. They just leave that thing in there until they need it, and when they need it, they're just blowing the mothballs off of it to put it on you. Well, I have mine inside of a pouch. I'm also not a peace officer. I'm really praying to God I never have to use this. Overall, that's the belt. Uh, I think it ran about $1,300, and uh, it was worth it. There were some things that were on here before that were a little more expensive. The canteen, canteen pouch, and the canteen cup and K-Bar combat spoon, which you guys will all see in the unboxing, are not on here. <laughs> I tried. I genuinely tried. Uh, it was kind of cool for a second, but a little ho a little too hokey even for me. Um, I also wanted some freaking pockets. <laughs> um, so, boom, pockets. So that's the belt. Let me know what you guys think. Um, let me know what you guys would like to see. I mean, we intend to build other belts. I know my next belt is going to be just a plain Jane range belt. That's going to probably run off of a 511 just regular belt, probably one of their instructor belts. And uh, let me know what color you guys want it in. That might be kind of fun. I'll do something crazy. Please like and subscribe to the video. Um, smash, smash, smash that thumbs up button. We are affiliated by Acre Gold, so uh, get your gold in the link below. I will also leave a link to our merchandise in the description below, um, as well as a link to my website. Um, where you can get some more kind of merchandise and some training if you uh, feel so inclined. Yeah.